Hi everybody, Jim Brotherton here again. I've got another solar system upgrade to do on my pop-up RV. This time I'm removing my lead acid battery bank. They are four 12 volt marine deep cycle batteries. They've run through the lifespan and it's time to get rid of them and upgrade. So I'm gonna upgrade to lithium iron phosphate batteries. You commonly see them as life ho four batteries and can be used in any number of applications. And I'm also going to remove my pulse width modulator solar charge controller because it doesn't have the ca capability or the technology to charge a lithium battery bank, but some out there can. Mine is old enough or it wasn't designed to. So just check your manual to make sure that if you have a pulse width modulator and you're switching to lithium batteries that yours has the capability to do so. So I'm gonna swap that out with the Bouge RV Sunflow 40 amp smart MPPT solar charge controller. So it should be a pretty straightforward installation. What could go wrong? <laughs> Now that I have the batteries tied in, wired in parallel, I'm ready to connect the batteries to the charge controller. So Bouge RV says that the first step is to connect the batteries first. I'm using ring terminals here, but because the ring terminals are too wide to fit into the slots provided on the charge controller, I'm trimming the edges. But a ring terminal gives me some comfort that the wires won't slide out. It's totally your preference. You'll see later I'm going to use uh, fork terminals for the solar panels. I feel they're going to do fine and just show you the two types that you could possibly use to connect these things.
Here I'm going to quickly show you how I'm terminating the other end of these battery wires. These lead to the battery bank and just show you some tricks that I use to make sure that the wire connection is secure and protected as well as I can. And what you see me doing here is using two different size of shrink tubing to protect the termination. I'm using a ring terminal here and if you're like me you probably buy these things from your local hardware store or an auto store and these are sized for a range of wire types and because of that this little plastic jacket that covers the wire is not always sized appropriately. What I found to alleviate the variance between the size of that piece of plastic um, and the wire size is to just use a shrink tubing that is large enough to fit over the plastic terminal and then one that's um, sized a little bit bigger than the wire and then when you shrink these things down that we've increased the jacket size uh, so that the larger shrink tubing can actually uh, create a seal against that wire where a lot of times it won't because it won't shrink far enough. So now that the cables are prepped I'm tying it into the battery these are about 16 inches long 10 gauge cables and if you uh, look at the manual it tells you in right away one of the first sections that the battery must be connected first so you see me tying it in here and you'll see that the the system actually comes alive based on the battery power so i think it does some kind of a system setup um, for the charge controller so connect it to the battery first before you attach the wires that lead to the solar panels for the solar, I've switched over to fork terminals. Uh, so it's really just your preference whether you want to ring, use ring terminals or fork terminals. The fork uh, fit better actually without doing any trimming, but um, the ring terminals I feel like can't get pulled out because they're a full loop around the screw. My next step is to modify this box so I can run cables through it. I want to try to keep it watertight and also provide some protection to the cables. So I'm going to use cable glands here. Uh, you can find these at your local hardware store. I have some from another project. So I'm going to drill holes into the box that match up to these and then I'll run the wires through these. It'll help with wire strain and also managing dirt and dust and debris and that kind of thing from getting into the box. I have a few wires that run directly to the battery and so instead of being fed uh, from the 12 volt DC side of the power center inside the RV that splits up the 110 and the 12 volt power systems, these run directly to the battery. This one right here with the one with the fuse uh, is actually part of the Bogart engineering uh, battery monitor. And so for each of these that already have an inline fuse on them, so these are just a spade fuse, and uh, I'm gonna have to trim them off and then re-terminate them once I run the wires through the cable clamp. Just to give you a quick look of how this work is working. Configuring the MPPT. Okay, it kind of seems like it could be a little dizzying, these instructions, but it's just a simple menu-driven system where you use the select and enter button to go through some menus. 
The good thing is I only set two things. I set the system voltage to 12 volts and I set the battery type to lithium. For everything else, boost charging, float charging, equalization charging, overcharging, I left at factory default, which made the configuration of this thing super simple. The only other change I made was to set it to viewing mode, which allows you to see how the solar system is performing throughout the day. But I can get all that information a lot easier just by using the app in my phone. So I'm gonna create a template with this cardboard of where the holes are on this Bouge RV. So we're gonna tape the template to the inside of the box here, level it, and then drill holes where I've marked uh, to attach the charge controller in front here of this panel with screws. We'll use roofing washers with a rubber gasket on it to keep it from leaking. And that'll give it a good secure tie in to the front box. And I'm gonna have to monitor the temperature for a while and make sure that this box doesn't get too hot for this thing. Uh, we don't really have a place for it inside, and since we have the Bluetooth app, this seems to make sense to just uh, put it in a protected, watertight area. Uh, what we just have to make sure is that there's enough airflow that it doesn't overheat along with the batteries. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Okay, so that wraps up everything inside the box. I have all the power retied back in. I've got the MPPT mounted here. I can still see the screen from right here and use the buttons, but also I'm using the mobile app. I've mounted the shunt here. Again, the shunt is, its only purpose here is to use the battery monitor inside. Which although the battery monitor has some overlapping features to the mobile app, it does have a handy feature of percentage full, which gives you a real quick snapshot of how much charge you have in your battery and percentage or how much you have left. Okay, so what is the load function? Well, you'll see load on several um, charge controllers on the market, and they usually have this indicator light of a light bulb. And what it's designed for several things, something like something you want to control when it gets power on a schedule, um, or if you want to monitor that load. My first instinct was that the, it should connect directly to the power center and power the power center. What I ran into was a problem that the Bouge RV's output was only at a maximum of 20 amps, where the power center load max was 40 amps, which means that if I connected the load output to the power center, it would shut off on the power overdraw. So I used it exactly how I think it's intended to be used. I bypassed the power center and am powering something directly, which is our Igloo Coolmate, uh, which we keep, you know, drinks in. Um, and so we run it 24 hours a day. We wanted to see what kind of load it put on the system. And, and we can do that very nicely with the Bougier V load function. If you want to complete this system, you'll want to tie in your power distribution center. So you want to make sure your power distribution center has the ability to work with lithium batteries. The power center works with your battery bank in a lot of ways. When connected to shore power, the power center converts 110 volt AC to 12 volt DC, and this powers all the devices connected to the DC side of the power center. When driving, many power centers can take power from your car's alternator and charge your battery bank. And when you're dry camping or boondocking, the battery bank actually powers the 12 volt devices in your RV. My power center is a Progressive Dynamics 4100, and I purchased this because it had the ability to switch between lead acid and lithium batteries. There's literally a PCB in the back of this thing that does a lot of the intelligence, and there's a switch to flip on this thing. So I'm gonna look in here, find that switch, flip it over to lithium, and then we're good to go. So we've saved a lot of space going this way with lithium batteries. Um, so we've got this nice little neat installation here. What I next need to do is mount this box so it doesn't slide around. And I think that we are um, good to go. 